All right, another five by five post done. Getting the hang of it now. That probably went about five times as quick as the first one I did. Um, I've got the heart centered pretty well this end, but not so well the other end, but it's way longer than I need it anyway, so that'll improve when I cut it down. I need some way of raising up one end to account for that if I want the heart in center posts, um, which because of the timber size I've got, that's the only real way to do it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's perfectly fine for what I'm using it for. Uh, yeah, I'll probably tidy it up, put it through the planer once it's uh, dried out a little bit. It won't dry out much before I need it, but it'll dry out a little bit and I'll put it through the planer thickness. Uh, yeah, going well. Two posts I need to finish the uh, ends of the greenhouse. I didn't have enough uh, when I was doing it, so those are to finish the, uh, the end wall. Right, so I'm running a lot more power now and it's uh, cutting a tree. It's amazing.
Right, so there we go, stacked up in the workshop. Should uh, stabilise, dry a little bit, and uh, leave for a couple of weeks now, and then put it through the plane of thickness, and then fit in the, in the greenhouse, probably leave it in place a little bit then, and then uh, glaze it once it's sort of settled down a bit. It's large, it doesn't dry that, it doesn't shrink that much when it dries, it's relatively stable, and it's gonna have a little bit of time to dry out um, anyway. So I think it'll be all right before we glaze it. Yeah, that's two days, two days work with the mill, and that's just the bits that are squared off. I've also got like half the workshop roof in slab wood as well, and like five liters of diesel. I would have used five times that amount with the chainsaw, and it would have taken me about two weeks to do that with the chainsaw. So I'm so pleased the bandsaw mill is just working great. And also the other thing is, is that you know these are five meter long pieces. You know, it's difficult to get that. Uh, it's difficult to travel with it on the road because you need a trailer and everything. You know, it's, it's really nice to be able to just cut long bits. Fantastic, and the bands from the middle is working great. Yeah, really pleased. Just want to show you from the end, just so you can see it's like four deep. Yeah, there's a lot of timber there. I don't know what it would have cost. Kind of tempted to price it up, but a lot of money's worth of timber there. Morning everyone, another day. Uh, I've got basically all of the greenhouse wood milled now, everything I think I need at least. And uh, so now I'm moving on to some other things that we got planned, just do it, getting all the milling done this week. Dot's done me a list, she wants a chicken coop, so I'm milling for that. And uh, uh, got slab wood for the workshop, and what else? Um, yes, I need to mill some scaffold boards for the access for when we're fitting the glass for the greenhouse which is a fantastic bonus of having a sawmill because if I need something like that come mill it for it is the right pain sometimes I have to do a 30 mile round trip to go and get some bit of wood I need you know now it's just brilliant oh yeah um I had a go at sharpening the blade I've got a spare blades but I had a go at sharpening the blade yesterday so I'm going to keep using the same blade hopefully and I just want to see how much use I can get out of it really because I'm going to put a lot of the chicken coop stuff doesn't matter anyway but all the stuff the greenhouse going through the planar thickness are anyway um, so I wasn't worried about the old wavy cut but I've had a go at sharpening it see if the waves have gone um, from it and yeah I just want to see how much use I can get out of a blade really because for me sharpening isn't much of a big deal really sharpening that blade but 35 pounds for the, for a new blade is more of a big deal you know I can sharpen the blade quicker than I can earn 35 pounds so let's see how many sharpenings I can get out of it see how much use I can get out of it uh, same goes for debarking I know debarking um, saves the blade but debarking takes a lot of time and debarking is a right pain and it's quicker to sharpen a blade so if my blade sharpening is successful then uh, then I'm gonna go with you know just keeping my blade sharp myself for as long as I possibly can so I'm gonna try that today sharpen blade we've got a spare but yeah I think we'll be alright this is uh, chicken coop wood now. Good to work.
Right, a couple of hours has passed since the last clip you just watched there. Uh, just after that clip ended, I uh, hurt my hand quite bad. Um, the winch that I used to raise and lower the uh, saw head uh, failed in some way. It, the ratcheting mechanism didn't grab or it wasn't engaged properly, I don't know, whatever happened, I was raising the winch and I let go of the handle and the handle whipped round, saw head dropped, not very far, only a couple of inches, it wasn't very high, but as the handle whipped round it hit my finger and my thumb and I think I've, uh, the, my thumb's okay, I've just got a black nail which I've popped, uh, it's my index finger I think is broken because I can move that knuckle but I, yeah, the actual handle of the, of the winch hit my uh, knuckle of my finger so hard that it broke the handle. Uh, so yeah, uh, pretty sure I've got a broken finger. Um, I'm just going to strap it to the, the other one. But yeah, pretty painful. Of all the things you think you get injured on on a sawmill, it, it, you know, that wouldn't have been what I guessed. But yeah, these things happen. The winch is coming off, it's going in the scrap pile, and I ordered a proper name brand electric winch. Uh, so this definitely just can't happen again. The result out of action for a little bit, bad finger. <laughs> These things happen, but yeah, no big deal really. Right, hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.